On these quiet streets, near the University of Pennsylvania's campus, is a school that carries on the spirit of an amazing woman named Sadie Alexander. I think they chose Sadie Tanamas Alexander as the school name because she is a, um, they wanted to choose um, a person that was strong and um, could do many things. And so they chose Sadie Tanner because she can do all of those things. Sadie Tanner Massell Alexander was born on January 2nd, 1898 in Philadelphia. At birth, her name was actually Sarah, but she went by the name Sadie. Sadie's father was Aaron Albert Massell II, and her mother was Mary Louise Tanner. Sadie also had an older brother, Aaron Albert III, and an older sister, Elizabeth. I think at that time that Sadie uh, probably had to go through some struggles. I think it was very hard for Sadie to grow while she was growing up because um, it was still like segregate, segregated and there was a lot of discrimination and so um, like her family probably cheered her on for all of her accomplishments but there were probably a lot of people who wanted to get in her way. Sadie had prominent relatives on both sides of her family. Her father was the first African-American to graduate from the University of Pennsylvania Law School. Sadie's grandfather, Benjamin Tucker Tanner, was a noted bishop in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Her uncle, Henry O. Tanner, was a famous 19th century painter. Another uncle, Nathan Francis Massell, was the first African-American to graduate from the University of Pennsylvania Medical School. Though Sadie grew up in Philadelphia, she moved all the way to Washington, D.C. to attend the academically acclaimed M Street High School, the first public high school for black students. It was later known as Dunbar High School. I think she did good in her work, and she got A's and B's and no C's. <laughs> I think she was like always in school just to strive to get where she wanted to get, and when she got it, she worked even harder to get something else. I think she would like be a very soft, quiet person that would just sit down somewhere and read a book during recess, like work during work on school work during her playtime. I think she was a good student because um, to go to law school you have to have a lot of patience and um, work very hard. After graduating from high school in 1915, Sadie went on to earn not one degree, not two degrees, but five degrees from the University of Pennsylvania. Sadie got her first degree at Penn School of Education, from which she graduated in 1918 with senior honors. Next, Sadie earned a Master of Arts degree in economics in 1919. In 1921, Sadie became the first African-American woman in the United States to earn a PhD in economics, and the first African-American woman to receive a doctorate from the University of Pennsylvania. In 1927, Sadie became the first African-American woman to graduate from the University of Pennsylvania Law School. She was also the first African-American woman elected associate editor of the Law Review, the most prestigious journal at Penn Law. Sadie went on to become the first African-American woman to pass the Pennsylvania Bar Exam and to serve as assistant city solicitor of Philadelphia. In addition, she was the first female secretary of the National Bar Association, the professional organization for black attorneys. Finally, in 1974, Sadie was awarded her fifth degree from Penn, an honorary doctorate of laws. I think when Sadie was a student at Penn, I think she was maybe intimidated because she was the first African-American woman. She was trying to be the first to graduate or whatever. So she probably had been intimidated, but at the same time, she was like motivated to continue and try to do her best so that she could be the first and one of the most important people in our history at Penn. So I think she really strived hard for that. That was a really good thing that she did because it was probably hard for her, but at the same time, she made it easier for herself knowing that she would like leave her mark at that school if she tried her hardest, and she did. I think that white people treated her poorly because of all the good things that she was doing. They might have felt she shouldn't be doing these things. 
even though that happened, Sadie uh, still was brave and did what she could do. Incredibly, in between all of her educational and professional accomplishments, Sadie still managed to find the time to start a family. When Sadie was in college, she became good friends with a woman named Virginia Alexander. She eventually married Virginia's brother, Raymond Pace Alexander. Sadie and Raymond went on to have two daughters, Mary Elizabeth Alexander and Ray Pace Alexander. The Alexanders practiced law together until Raymond became a judge. Her husband was also a great person, a great African-American man who graduated from Penn, and he was also in the history. In addition to her educational, professional, and personal accomplishments, Sadie achieved a number of milestones for which she was recognized and respected both in America and across the world. For example, she was the first national president of Delta Sigma Theta, the African-American sorority. In 1947, Harry S. Truman asked Sadie to join his President's Committee on Civil Rights. With Sadie's help, this committee issued the groundbreaking report to secure these rights and became a driving influence on future federal policies and laws related to civil rights. I think that Sadie thought, like most of the people in the African American history that we celebrate, um, like Martin Luther King, how he thought everybody should be equal and he strived his hardest to make it that way, and it happened. So I think that Sadie really like, thought that way too, that everybody should be equal no matter what anybody said, that women and men should be equal and different races should be equal. Nobody should be counted like nobody should be thought of less than another person. In 1948, the influential civil rights organization, the National Urban League, named Sadie Alexander their Woman of the Year in the Negro Heroes comic book. She was also a member of the City of Philadelphia's Commission on Human Relations for more than a decade. Finally, in 1978, President Jimmy Carter appointed her chairwoman of the White House Conference on Aging. Sadie was very active in her community and won many public service awards for her efforts. Even though Sadie did many very important things, she also had an adventurous side. For instance, she traveled throughout the world and was a licensed mariner. Sadie T.M. Alexander passed away in 1989 in Philadelphia. She was 91 years old. But her legacy lives on at the Penn Alexander School and beyond. If I met Sadie, the first thing I would say to her is, um, I'm glad that they named the school after her. If Sadie visited a school, I think she would say that this is a great school. I think she would say that this school really does a great job at representing her. If Sadie came into this school, I think she would be really surprised that people admire her this much to actually make a school like all about her. The students in the school are like, it's like Sadie is in each and every person in this school. Everybody has their own individual qualities. Everybody like is respected in the school. We're all like one big family. At the school, I think all races go um, get along well. I think that um, people in the school don't judge each other by their skin or how they look, just by their personality. Some of the students do remind me of um, Sadie because they work very hard to um, get what they want. Before I came to this school, I really didn't like do science fairs and all that stuff, and I didn't go to competitions and like win things. But when I came here, I was inspired by her and other people who reminded me of her after I learned about her to like step out. And when I did step out, I won first place in the computer science fair. And I went again and won second place, so I'm proud of myself for that. I do try to be brave and courageous because Sadie is my inspiration. I try my best to be nice and to do as much work as I can and to complete things and not to be afraid of going another step higher at things that you think that you won't do. So like not letting people bring you down. And I really see. admire Sadie because like most of her qualities, I sort of find in myself. 
I do think that I'm kind of like Sadie because um, uh, she was hardworking and I think I'm hardworking. And um, I think uh, she would like try her best at everything and I try my best at everything. If I met Sadie today on the streets, um, I would say to her, you, you did a lot of things and I'm very grateful for those things that you did, so thank you.